Welcome to Between the Bytes, tech updates and cyber news. My name is Gary Arnold. And I'm Derek Parkinson. And we are joined today by a very special mm-hmm. guest, the latest member of the Executech marketing team, Latasha Darden. Hello, Latasha. Hi, thank you for having me. Welcome. We are excited to have you. Latasha, we better have you give yourself a quick intro to our podcast listeners. Sure. I am the newest addition to the Executech marketing team. I am the driver and executor of new marketing initiatives for our subsidiary brands. So whether it's creating a new marketing strategy or just updating your current strategy, I'm your girl. Love it. Perfect. Also, don't let her fool you. She's also a super nerd, just like the rest of us. So <laughs> I was trying to keep that to myself, but thank you. Yeah, no, no, this true. is the nerd podcast. I mean, <laughs> shoot, we could rename it to the nerds, get together and talk nerd stuff. That'll be the new podcast name there. So we've got the marketing folks together here. James Fair is on a exciting but deserved vacation, our usual IT expert. But between the three of us, we might equal a tier one tech so we could talk about some tech things, <laughs> you know. But today we want to talk about the overlap of our expertise and the technical world. We want to talk about how IT and marketing interact. We want to talk about marketing technology and maybe some marketing software. Generally, this is still pretty relevant to most businesses. And so between the three of us, I think we'll have some interesting opinions and interesting ideas about the overlap of tech and marketing. So let's dive in. The first thing I wanted to ask all of us so I guess I'm asking myself this question, but I'm also asking you guys is what are your go-to tools in marketing or not, but let's keep it to business, right? What are your, what are the tools that you can't live without? For me, first and foremost is Asana, which is actually just task management. So I use it for marketing purposes, of course, but it can be used for any kind of task management. It was one of the first ones that came out very visually appealing. And, you know, you can tell they had a UX designer when they created that platform and that was not normal for task management tools before Asana. Now it's more common. In fact, a lot of them go way over the top. Cough, cough, monday.com, cough, cough, where they look gorgeous, but they're essentially kind of useless. So as far as functionality and ease of use goes, Asana is the only way I get anything done. Not sponsored, by the way. I should be, but I'm not. (laughs) I guess we'll we'll definitely be naming names in this podcast, talking specifics. Some we might leave out when we get to the uh, more hot takes later. <laughs> you two know what I'm talking about. We'll tease that for our audience here in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Latasha, I know you're also a big fan of Asana. I am also a fan of Asana, but what else is maybe one of your go-to tools? You just, you got to have HubSpot. That is my go-to. I look at it every day. I'm... Always, always, always in HubSpot. It's a driver for multiple things. You can pretty much do everything out of HubSpot from tracking and analytics and building in general. So yeah, HubSpot is my go-to. Look, I'm, I'm going to have to kind of agree with you guys, you know, from from getting marketing things done perspective, but also just business operations, the software. If all of our budget was cut and I could only keep one or two things, it would be HubSpot. And probably Adobe, the Adobe suite. Oh, yeah. Can't do without. Everything else, we can figure out a way. We can work around. We can bootstrap. But with those two things as a marketer, you should be good to go, honestly. And you can get a lot, a lot done. I like that you brought up Asana, Derek, because I don't think we're equipped to do a full-on breakdown. Maybe that's something we could do another time. But there are, of course, other tools out there. And specifically, there are tools within the Microsoft stack. So I'm sure our IT folks within Executech are rolling their eyes saying, why is marketing using Asana when Teams is right there, right? And Teams has a little project management task tool built into it, as does kind of Outlook. There might even be a standalone app. I should know this more, but I'm sure Microsoft 365 has its own little standalone app that is just for tasks. But we as marketers tend to be a little snooty sometimes. That's mm-hmm. the best explanation I got. <laughs> the biggest bother for me is Outlook, actually, Outlook slash Teams. They do have a task management system, and it is pretty cool. It integrates between Teams and Outlook, and you get an actual list and everything. Not as pretty to look at, but still it is fairly functional. My biggest issue with it 
is in order to really access any of that, you have to use Outlook online. And I can't stand mm -hmm. yes. Outlook online. I like the software, the actual downloadable software version of Outlook. And that does not come with any of the task management right. integrations. And it's so funny you say that because it's weird to me how different the features of online versus the actual app can be. So like rules, I don't think you can, don't quote me on this folks, but I don't think you can create rules on the online version of Outlook. But that's like a go-to thing. Folders and rules, man. Yeah. You got to live by that. Mm -hmm. We could do a whole podcast on tips and tricks of Outlook. Stay tuned <laughs> for that. In fact, maybe that's our future webinar. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually had to, my wife recently started working and I had to give her sort of the lowdown on Teams and Outlook. She'd been out long enough. She didn't, she didn't know her way around. And I realized a lot of the stuff we could all use a refresher on. Even myself, I was like, wait a minute, oh, where, yeah. where is that in Outlook? But anyway, I digress. Asana and HubSpot. Bringing both of those up brings up a topic we've talked about, I believe, on the podcast before, and we certainly have a blog post on it. It's called Shadow IT, which is an overly dramatic name for what it is. I'm sure some IT person came up with it and thought it was really cool at the time. It's basically the idea of departments in a small or large organization coming across a problem or an obstacle and realizing we need some sort of tool or software to help us solve this. And so being independent thinkers, they go out and source it and start using a tool on their own that helps solve their problem. Literally, it's us using Asana in this department. That, that is literally the definition of shadow IT. Now, this isn't going to stop us from using Asana, but what are the problems with that that we should maybe warn our listeners about? The problems with that one, and again, we've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure with James, but one is that there increases the security risk by there are more logins, there are more vectors, as they call it, for attack. If Asana gets breached, now they have our Asana passwords. Now, it doesn't mean they get access to our system. Asana is not linked to our Microsoft or any of our internal systems, but that's not the case for every single kind of software. Some softwares do have deeper connections and links into other parts of your server and your network. And if you're setting up a tool without your IT department knowing, it's an unknown risk. It's a risk that can go unnoticed. And so there's that aspect. There's also just, as we've mentioned, sometimes you get into tools that are uh, unnecessarily redundant. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true. Teams does solve some of the problems that we are trying to solve with our task management tool. Now, we could talk about the justifications for why and, and, and so on. We've beaten the Asana horse to death here. But in general, part of shadow IT is also the fact that there's an increased cost of business with departments trying to find their own things when we actually already signed up for this product that solves that exact problem in another department. Now we just need to share it or it's already company wide. You just forgot that it existed. Yeah. Another risk with having other applications and things that you're creating accounts for is, especially if your organization runs on the Google suite, is the tokens. It's very handy when you're creating an account with Asana, any other app or website, they have the option of login using your Google account, login using Facebook. Those are called tokens. It does create a lot of risk because it does connect everything that you have together. So you do have to be aware of those tokens. And especially when you're experimenting with other software and other tools, sometimes you can get some pretty bad ones just because your organization might take pride in their security. And something like HubSpot, they might take some pride in it, but this next software that you download, that company cybersecurity might not be a priority for them. Yep. Yeah, you're taking on a lot of risk with those. Yeah, that, that's a whole other rabbit hole of an IT topic is just vendor management in general. We've seen that in the past year, especially that some of the biggest ransomware attacks have come via third party. You're connected with a vendor. The relationship is obviously solid, but the vendor takes some aspect of their security maybe less seriously than they should have. And then it causes you problems for your company. Cyber, there's a reason we do this podcast. There's a reason we talk about something cybersecurity every week. It's a serious problem. And there are so many variations of the problem and what's going on out there. And we're going to do our best to stay on top of it. But it's a lot, yep. frankly. It is. What else? Gary, what what are your go-to tools outside of? Yeah, I was I was wondering if maybe it'd be fun to kind of just list out off the top of my head, if I can, everything that we use at Executech on the marketing side. And 
man, the tools that our IT team uses, some of them are extremely obscure. The list would be very long. We'd be here all day talking about all the different tools that our IT team uses. And I know to most of our listeners, that is completely (laughs) uninteresting and irrelevant. But we do marketing because marketing is the fun side of business. So let's talk about some of the fun things we use. Just going down the list off the top of my head, and these aren't necessarily endorsements of every single one of them, but we do like them and we do use them, most of them anyway, for a reason. Right now, we are creating this podcast in a tool called Zencaster, which allows us to record our audio on separate tracks and record the video, which is very handy for editing and the way that we distribute this podcast to all of you. But the actual then distribution of this podcast is done through another platform called Anchor.fm. Both of those platforms have free options and free tiers. I believe we've upgraded on the Zencaster version, but we're still, mm-hmm. Anchor's still free. It's owned by Spotify. Take that for what it's worth. Makes the integration to Spotify really nice. We can push our podcast to basically everywhere. So just right there, out of the gate, there's, man, part of the lesson here is just how much tech and software goes into an average employee's job. Oh, Marketing yeah. maybe skews a little more than I think maybe a, an accountant or something, but, but I'm also not an accountant. So what do I know? You know, Derek, you'll take this and you'll put it in audition, Adobe audition. Love it. So there's another tool right there. The Adobe suite's awesome because it comes with all the Adobe tools from premiere to Photoshop and the rest, but audition is a great video uh, audio editing tool. You're also using that for the transcripts, right, Derek? Uh, yeah, I use premiere pro for the transcripts. That's a fairly new feature. That is an absolute godsend. It works pretty well. It can even split up the different speakers. So it will listen to the voices and actually separate the three of us, for example, in this one. And it's pretty spot on. Struggles with names. It absolutely cannot figure out Executech. It'll be (laughs) executive or I've seen some pretty weird versions of it trying to figure out what it is that we're, we're saying. But it goes, it has a good job. It has a look up and replace. So it also spells my name wrong always. Mm -hmm. So at the top. I type in, you know, I find Derek and replace it with Derek spelled correctly, and it'll do it through the entire transcript instantly. So super cool tool. I like the Adobe Suite. Gone are the days of getting Photoshop for $300, and it comes on six different disks and running through and installing all those disks. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Now it's just a subscription to the Adobe Cloud. And it updates. You can pick and choose what applications you want, so you don't have to weigh down your computer too much. So just for this little uh, get together here in this podcast episode alone, there are four different tools that we used. Yeah. Never mind the fact that we, you know, talked about it and maybe put a task in Asana. Mm-hmm. And of course, we haven't even talked about the beast, which is Teams. And we've talked about it before. I think all of us generally love Teams, prefer it over Slack. It really is a workhorse and the core of communication, at, at least at, at our company and many, many other companies. So another application then. And this one's pretty great because if there's anybody out there who is, when it happens all the time, they are in the marketing department or they are the marketing department by default because your organization just isn't big enough to have a marketing department or it just wasn't a priority. And now it all of a sudden turns into one. I've seen that countless numbers of time. There are applications that can help you along. HubSpot University is pretty fantastic if you're just getting started. Their inbound marketing training is, honestly, it's very solid. The other tool that I like on the SEO side, if you're struggling with writing content, you need topic ideas and you want it to help with your search engine optimization, your visibility of the website on Google and Google searches. SEM Rush actually has a pretty fantastic tool for that. With the major caveat, SEM Rush's pricing is brutal. It's broken up. They have cheap options, but then they show you this amazing feature that you could use if you just upgrade one more level. So you do it. Then they show you the next one, or it's only half the feature that you wanted. If you want the full feature, then one more level after that. And then you're paying, you know, $150 a user each month. Yep. But honestly, it just might be worth it if you are starting to really focus on SEO and especially content. Their content SEO tools are stellar. I'd be curious if our listeners are interested in us doing more thorough breakdowns or reviews of particular softwares. That's certainly something we could look into. 
drop us a line at info at executech.com if you're interested or have any suggestions for topics in general, but certainly we'd love to look at reviewing software. Latasha, what other tools do you find yourself using on a day-to-day basis? On a day-to-day basis, Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. That is always a great place to start. And it's a great educational spot as well. There are certifications all over that bad boy that you could start with. Even if you're starting your own like little side hustle, it's a great place to start. But I love it because you can target people that are actually interested in your product. And usually it's your first point of contact. And then from there, you can go to Google Analytics and adjust everything that you need moving forward. So I don't know, Google is a powerhouse on its own and it gets a little bit more granular when it comes to all the details that you're looking for. So Google Ads and Google Analytics as a team is just a great powerhouse for me. Love looking at it. Yeah, I like it. And that brings up a good point. This is Latasha, you have a side business making wonderfully nerdy bonnets that I, <laughs> I genuinely enjoy. So you are the owner, the salesperson, the marketing team, the fulfillment person, the shipping team, the distribution, all of it. Oh, the whole shipping. <laughs> it all gets to be you. Yeah. What other tools do you use on that end? That come in handy oh, for your business. Oh, man. That come in handy for me. I did try to use MailChimp with that because there was an integration, and I'm spacing on the name, but pretty much anyone that touches your shop, an email list is created. You can pull that email list and target them with either coupons. And so it integrates with MailChimp and you can just go from there. And of course, within MailChimp, it's easy to set up your funnels and touches and everything like that. So I did a test, just a test on, I I think it was scrunchies and almost sold out within a week. And it was just to test. It's good because a lot of my education came from say HubSpot and building things out in there. And it was easy to translate into MailChimp as a a product. And then outside of that, I'm on all of the socials, on all of them. Got to do my own advertisements. Mm -hmm. So Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All right. TikTok has been working for me. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, I've been trying to explore new things as well as apply my current knowledge to my shop and my business. So, yeah. I love it. You know, anytime, just like Gary with MFA, anytime I hear social media for businesses, I have to say (laughs) things like TikTok, you absolutely can. It's working for Latasha. It's relevant to the platform. To all the business people out there who want to get in on TikTok because that's a new market, do not waste people's time. Right. If your brand doesn't like Executech, IT, it's a stretch to find a way for us to justify <laughs> creating content for TikTok. So I'm not going to until I, unless a very honest and good idea comes up, don't waste people's time online. Yes. I do like MailChimp. MailChimp is an email platform, kind of a light version of a CRM. And I think it is a very good first step for the smaller businesses because HubSpot does not come cheap. <laughs> So MailChimp is is a very good option Mm -hmm. if it is pricing that is an issue. A lot of HubSpot trainings, though, you can find and they do provide without actually being a client of HubSpot's. Another thing I wanted to sort of bring up and just sort of comment on was the sometimes interesting overlap between IT and marketing, Mm -hmm. where those two departments will often collaborate together. Yeah, And I think the big example which it's funny, this is more of a three-way department collaboration is on the website. And we need to make a clarification here. IT doesn't do websites. (laughs) Not web dev. Web development does websites, Mm -hmm. which deals with some IT things. And of course, marketing also does the website, but typically not the technical backend aspects that are both web dev and IT. It's a little complicated, to be honest, now that I'm starting to say it out loud. But in short, what I've worked with directly with our IT department is the domain side of things, getting your domain set up and hosted, where it's pointed, your domain name is hosted and pointed, and we can do a whole little explainer on how the internet works, because it's still a magical mystery to me as well. We use a software, I don't know if it's a tool called Cloudflare, which is fairly well known and fairly popular to help regulate, govern, and secure our website. 
you know, that includes our SSL certificate. And again, that's very much IT's realm, but I will often interact with them and say, hey, we need to tweak something on the back end of our website, not the code, not the development to change the look, but a literal functionality of the speed of the site. And it is a cloud flare, therefore IT related thing. Hmm. But again, a lot of times you'll, you know, we get clients asking us, well, our website's not working. Well, if it's an internet issue, we, we can troubleshoot that. If it's a domain or an SSL issue, we can troubleshoot that and often hosting. But if something's broken in the code, some of our guys know how to do code. Most of our guys are are very, very smart, but they're not coders. And so that is a web development coding issue. Most of us marketers aren't that smart either. So don't ask us. <laughs> I can't fix it. email. Can't do it. <laughs> and, e- and email is the other one where IT inter- intersects with marketing. And I know that email is right up there with printers in terms of the frustration and just annoying type of troubles that brings to IT people. Printers, I think, are the worst, but email's right up there. There are some things that, that I've helped IT do as a marketer, and it's usually just trying to make the email signature pretty, but that's about as far as it gets. Other email issues like the spam filter and all those things, you got to talk to the IT department. Yeah. I would compare IT and web development like an orthopedic surgeon and a brain surgeon, is if you tear a bunch of stuff in your shoulder and you need surgery. The brain surgeon could probably figure it out and fix you, but your shoulder won't work the same for the rest of your life. (laughs) It'll technically be fixed, but it won't really be fixed. So you need the right people. Well, we've covered a variety of things. You know, we've touched on a lot of the software we've used, some of the, maybe the cautions around picking up a random software and just running with it. There is a last topic we could cover. It's a bit of a rant on my end. And so we could totally make it another podcast episode or we could go in deep right now. Get into it. Go for it. So I'm sure that most of our listeners can relate to this. You will get a LinkedIn DM from, you know, bless their heart, uh, an SDR that's really just trying to do their job. So nothing personal, but they will ask for a connection request. They hit you up and it's... Two seconds later, hey, what are you guys using for, I don't know, customer tracking on your website or leads? Boy, do I get hit up a lot for lead sources. Mm -hmm. We can download a list of blah, 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 blah. We get it all the time. And that's not even the worst part. I mean, it is. I think most everyone can relate to that, that we get pitched and hit up by sales people all the time. And again, they're just trying to do their jobs. Is that the best way to do it? No, it's not. What's frustrating to me is the next layer. Let's say hypothetically, I am somewhat interested in what product X is solving for. And sure, maybe it could be used here with an Executech. Please tell me more. Well, uh, I'd like to book a time to learn more about you. Okay, well, can you tell me a little bit more about what your product does? I mean, your website kind of says it, but can you give me just a direct pitch right now? And can you tell me the rough pricing? Now, that's the real clincher right there. And this is my big, I'm on my soapbox now, guys. There's no turning back. (laughs) I just want to ask for a little bit of pricing. I'm not asking for specifics. I just need a bandwidth, a range of your typical pricing. and. To me, it has become, I used to be more patient with this, but I no longer am. And I encourage, you know, if we've got any other executives out there, go for it. Hold this standard. If you cannot provide me a concise answer to what your pricing roughly is, I'm not asking for a quote, just asking for a range, I'm out. I will not take your meeting. I will not do any sort of booking. I will not do a demo. I'm probably going to be turned off from your entire product category for the next six months. If you do video hosting of some kind, I'm not going to even look at video crap for the next four months because I just, nope. It's almost a guarantee that you're overpriced. Well, and it's not, and it, and it may not even be. But that's my assumption. That's where my head goes. If you are that unwilling to give me a price, I will assume that it's because you're grossly overpriced and I won't bother. I could be completely wrong, but you should have told me otherwise. Here's the mini story of really why I've gotten hard on this is that I had a SDR hit me up like on LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. just like I described. I said, yeah. And this was a couple years ago. I was like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I think it was like a webinar 
hosting platform. This was before the you know Zoom big days, and I was like, sure, let's let's talk. So I had an intro call with their SDR, vetting, asking questions about Executech, yada yada yada. Great. Okay. Next call. Book another call. An additional layer of questions about what we were doing, what our team looks like, what goals we were trying to accomplish. Okay. And, and again, I should have been smart and just shut this down. <laughs> Next call. Actual demo of the product. Okay. Walking me through step by step. And look, some people, that's really important for me. I can poke my way around almost any software and get comfortable with it if you just give yeah. me a login. But they mm-hmm. took the time to walk me through. Blah, 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 blah. I'm now on the fourth meeting. Hour and a half, maybe two hours of literal meeting time, let alone email and calendaring, just shenanigans, right? So at least two hours of my time in and two hours of all these people's time in. And now pricing is finally coming up. Starting price was 30 grand a year. (laughs) And I was like, guys... (laughs) <laughs> look, and, and look, every business is different. There are some businesses where that very much makes sense. That's very much within their range. I was like, guys, I don't think you understand that you're pitching me a supplement to my webinar and CRM. I don't pay that much for like all of my tools combined. <laughs> like this should have been right out of the gate. You should know that I am not your target demographic. Okay. And that's really what it comes down to. Marketing philosophy 101. Know your audience. Mm-hmm. Just like you said, Derek, if you give me pricing and I'm like, holy smokes, that's expensive. Well, clearly I wasn't actually someone you should be selling to in the first place. Yep, It's a problem that so many SaaS companies have right now. Software as a service. We got to define our acronyms just in case. <laughs> Some of them are really good about it. A lot of them do have transparent pricing on their website. More power to them. I'm more encouraged to explore them when I do see that. But the ones that don't, huge red flag. Mm-hmm. Even if your pricing was reasonable, even if your product was amazing, the fact that you're not willing to put that up front and let me decide whether I'm a qualified for this or not really turns me off. So... There's the rant about software and software shopping. We didn't even get into like the process of software shopping, using review sites versus talking to your peers versus demoing versus all that stuff. That could probably be a podcast for another time. No kidding. (sighs) That's the end of my soapbox. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) The last thing I wanted to end on is some advice from Latasha. Mm -hmm. because you have built your own business. What's the name, by the way? Oh, Comic Bonnet? Comic Bonnet. So good. And it's on Etsy. A lot of it is on your own. I mean, you you obviously had marketing jobs alongside that, which can make it easier. Sometimes it can give you access to extra tools. But if somebody is stepping into a marketing position or being conveniently placed in a marketing position (laughs) out of necessity, (laughs) what is the top two or three things that you would recommend, whether it's training tools, resources? Mm. So my top things to recommend, because that happened to me, that what do they call that? Like the imposter syndrome, you know, you (laughs) kind of get stuck. Yeah, it happens. So definitely educate yourself. If there's something that, even if the tools are going to be provided for you down the line, start to educate yourself ahead of time, get your foot in the door, and then, you know, flesh out what it is that you really want to improve on. And then podcasts, books, start tapping into the things that you are hearing in your environment to get closer to the people that you want to improve or, you know, level up with. That's really, really important. And just do it. Don't sit back for too long. Don't think about it too long. Get your foot in the door and just do it. That was the one thing for me that took me. I talked about Comic Bonnet for probably a year (laughs) before (laughs) I finally was just like, what am I doing? I know how to do this, 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 and this. And to get started, it was more than enough. So yeah, don't sit back and sit on it for too long. Go ahead and get started. Use your resources. If you know people from work or outside of work, start conversations and, you know, pick up, you know, new tips and create those tasks for yourself. But yeah, I would say education education, education is and important and you can never have too much of it. So, yeah. yeah, I think over planning, over analyzing and not taking any action, when, especially when it comes to social media content yes. and content creation, 
that is like a systemic issue in the marketing world, yeah, just pull the trigger. If it's sloppy, if it's messy, it's, <laughs> there's course corrections you can make. And that's how you learn. That's how you make those course corrections is actually doing something. So I love it. Thank you. Yeah, and when I was doing a, a lot of my research, I was like, I there are some things that I would change about other people's shops, so <laughs> I, could just, uh, I can just apply it to mine, and I'm yep. pretty sure I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, marketing friends and tech nerds, it's great to talk to you guys. It's great to uh, kind of bring together again, overlapping a little bit of the marketing and the IT side of things. We'll, of course, be circling back on other IT-related topics in the weeks to come, and we'll also reference some of the things we referenced, like Shadow IT. We've got blogs on that that we can reference in the show notes. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. (laughs) Thanks for having me, guys. See you later. Anybody from Asana, if you're listening, sponsor me, please. (laughs) We'll take your money. (laughs) See you guys. See you guys.